Okay, guys, let me save you some time and ask you only one question. Do you know how to win this easily if you are the white pieces? If your answer is yes, then you don't have to watch this video because there's no point. That's exactly what we're going to learn in this lesson. If you don't or if you know it sort of, then stick around because we really need to get this one under control. Now, a few things that I have to tell you about this endgame, we already had a very good lesson on Rook endgames. And now we're going to sort of wrap it up with these last uh, principles that we haven't covered yet. Now, back then I mentioned, guys, that whenever we have this extra pawn, this pass pawn on the other side of the board, we should have our Rook behind the pawn. It doesn't matter if it's my pawn or not. If I'm the black pieces, I also want my Rook to be behind the pawn. That's how Rooks perform better. So that's a very important principle in Rook Endgames. Rooks behind the pass pawn, yours or not, right? We even had a short talking about this. Now, let's say that you got your Rook behind the pawn. This is the ideal uh, scenario that you want. But still, I see a lot of you not being able to convert this because you don't have the technique. So let's get to it. What we're going to be using is a game played by Alekhine with the white pieces versus Capablanca. And you're going to see how Alekhine was able to convert this into a win. So first thing that I want to do when I have uh, this situation, my plan, my main plan is that I need my king to go over and help me push the pawn. That's the main thing, right? So in this game, Alekhine immediately just went king to d3 with the idea of going towards a rook. Of course, the black pieces are going to do uh, whatever they can. If they know what they're doing, they're going to do whatever they can to stop you from doing that. But again, guys, if you know the right technique, even if you're playing against the strongest engine, you're going to be able to convert these. Now, after king d5, you're going to see that we continue with king to c3, king to c5, and then you have this kind of opposition so that my king cannot get in. And this is so important. That's why I always tell you to go back and review the entire Endgames playlist that I created for you guys. When we started talking about opposition back in lesson number 29, I told you it was one of the most important things you need to learn in chess endgames because you could you need to apply it to other more complicated endgames. And this is one of them. So here, what do I need to do? Well, my opponent is in this sort of a Sooks 1 position and uh, I need to do... And actually, this is more like from lesson, I want to say, uh, 18, 19, where we talked about the uh, king and rook checkmate. So I need to do a tempo and I'm going to do it with my rook. So now when I go rook a2, you're going to see that my opponent has to make a choice. Either they go king b5 and my king penetrates remember opposition now when the king moves i gain more space or penetrate i go towards the king side or if they go to d5 my king gets in to get to b5 and then finally of course if they move the rook i move my pawn to a6 if they do something like f6 i do f3 this three versus three it's going to end up being locked anyways now you might be asking why do i want to go to the king side well this is perfectly fine for me if they go there i don't mind it if they take um the pawn because now my king is closer to these pawns and we talked about this on lesson 39 when we talked about past pawns i collect the pawns create a past pawn that's the end of it now of course in this game after we did rook to a2 the black pieces decided you know what i have a better i have more chances if i go at least towards the pawn and it's a long chart uh, for them to get to, to my king side. So after king b5, here Alekhine did something that is unnecessary, but it doesn't hurt. Especially if you're in time pressure, he went rook to b2. So he's daring the black pieces to take the pawn, because then he goes check. And after he trades rooks, the same thing. This king is going to be closer to the other pawns. It should be an easy win. So after rook b2, of course, uh, Capablanca did not take the pawn. He just went back to c5. And then we go back to a2, same position, king b5, and then king to d4. Now, very important, back on lesson number 90 or 91, when we talked about Capablanca's endgame technique, I talked to you about how uh, players use this rule of the threefold repetition to affect their opponent psychologically. So sometimes, when you see your, you're losing, you see your opponent repeating, you get this hope that maybe it could be a draw. And then all of a sudden you see a move like king to d4 and then it sort of throws you off a little bit. Also, it helps you gain some time if you have the increment. Anyways, after king d4, the black pieces could do two different things. Either king b4 or they could do rook to d6 check. This one, and I wanted to mention it because it's really important to reinforce the idea of opposition. If they go king to b4, this is lateral opposition same thing back to king and pawns endgames now i cannot get in but the same thing i do a tempo rook a1 
and basically they have to move. Of course, if they want to continue to try to get to the rook, well, I'm going to penetrate, go towards the pawn. We know that this is going to be an easy win for the white pieces. So going back, I just wanted to mention it. After king d4, we get check. And of course, we continue to go towards the king side. And at this point, very important, we're ready to get into the king side that way or this way. And the pawn is about to, to promote. So they have to make a decision quickly. They have to either put the king or the rook in front of the A pawn. So after king e5, we have check. The king continues to go towards the king side. Notice how this king is completely out of the game. And now we got king a6. So they need the rook to sort of help out. This is a more powerful piece. And the king is going to be used to block the pawn. So now after king a6, easy, we have king to g5. And then check. We go king h6. Look at this. We're trying to get to the base of the pawn chain. Guys, I know that I'm talking a lot, but this is basically, it boils down to simple steps. I want, I wanted to bring my king over to help. They didn't let me. The king got there in, on time. Well, I'm going to bring my king now to go to the other side. And here, the, the black pieces just went rook f5. It looks like a very powerful move. It looks like the rook is doing a lot. But in reality, it is a pretty bad position for the rook. I know, it is attacking my pawn, it is defending their pawn. But this next idea, I need you to really remember it. And this is a lesson that I want to keep it short. And, and that's why I'm breaking it down. Because guys, I need you to maybe just once in a while, you come back and review this end game. It is really important. And by the way, after this game, when they did, of course, go over the game, uh, they mentioned that it was a better idea to just do rook e7 and then when the king comes over, yeah, something like this and they're still defending that base pawn, right? But f5, you're going to see why the rook is so awkward on f5. So after rook f5, we got king to g7 and look at this. Now what happens is that we get to this, again, suk one position. The king shouldn't move because the pawn keeps pushing and the rook now needs to continue to defend the pawn. And you might say, okay, I have f3, I have f6, f5. Well soon you're not going to have those because the moment the white pieces do something like f4 it leaves you with only these two squares with that said you need to be patient you need to find the right time to do f4 now the rook needs to go don't forget something like f6 this is going to fall right so rook f3 and now rook go, uh, king goes to g8 then the rook has to go back and now look at this there's no need to rush we have king f8 rook f3 then king g7 and this is sort of like triangulation so again those of you who have been following this course in in order step by step lesson by lesson all of this is very familiar so after king g7 now the rook cannot get to f6 the king cannot move the pawns cannot move we have rook f5 and then finally we got pawn to f4 that's it complete six one very uncomfortable to be in this position of course the same thing king cannot move rook cannot move and the pawns cannot move so this just collapses for the black pieces that's it if they move the rook let's say here give me the pawn then give me the other pawn and this is just gonna be a win guys imagine you playing this in a tournament game and you apply this technique it looks fancy it looks really complicated but as you can see it is not it's just a matter of being a genius and just coming up with this on your own or haven't seen it before so that you can implement these ideas. Now, one more thing that I wanted to say before we review this, if you review this with the engine, the engine recommends something very interesting. Instead of doing all of this craziness with the king around and so on, the engine recommends, let me actually go back here. Um, instead of king g8, uh, they recommend to just bring the rook over to collect that pawn. And this is again, because the black king is completely out of the game. So they let them take the pawn. They even let them take the other pawn. Because now when you collect, this is the end of it. You have king and rook versus only the rook on that side of the board. If they trade, needless to, to say, this is already winning. And uh, if they try to just avoid the trade and do something like this, well, I'm going to go rook f3. My king is left to collect this pawn. So you have two different approaches. I never thought of this one that the engine recommended. But now that I saw it, it makes perfect sense. I might just use it next time. So let me just go back quickly from this position. Let's try to do this in our head. That way we practice our ability to visualize. And notice that all that we did was bring the king over to help. If they stop us by doing opposition, then all I'm going to do is a tempo, just like we learned on lesson number 29. So I put the rook back. Now they have to let me in. If they go here, I go in. If they go to b5, I go d4 and, and so on. So in this game also, opposition. Well, I'm gonna do a tempo, they let me in. If they do what they did in this game, check. 
then they just went king a6 and my king continues to go in check then rook f5 we saw how this is pretty odd now you understand and then after rook f3 we got king g8 rook f6 rook f8 this you can figure it out you can calculate this of course king g7 now f6 is not available anymore finally f4 and then everything collapses so guys this should be it this is a good opportunity to a good position to set it up against the engine choose the level that you typically typically play against and uh, see if you can convert this into a win you don't have to do it in, uh, against the, the most difficult level but if you want a challenge you could do it just see if you can use these techniques and convert this into a win so like always let me know in the comments if you were able to make it work or not and i will see you guys in our next lesson